Well, hello again, and if you're following our Lent readings um, and you're making your way through John's Gospel, well done. Uh, and for this coming week, we're going to read chapters 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17, a chapter a day for the next five days of this week, the weekdays. I once heard the German Chancellor Helmut Kohl giving a lecture. I can't remember what it was about, but I remember being bored. I once heard Professor Noam Chomsky uh, from America talking about what things all human languages have in common. Uh, I have been to see Diana Kroll at the Albert Hall. I once heard uh, Billy Graham uh, at a football stadium. This poster says he is worth listening to. Well, uh, absolutely he was. Um, I heard a lecture also by uh, the amazing Paul Daniels, the magician. Um, and I'm standing here because I have also seen live in concert three times the amazing Bob Dylan. There he is on the wall behind me. And um, uh, I've, I've heard all those people live. But in the next section of John's Gospel, we get um, a, an opportunity far greater, far more enticing even than any of those. We get to sit with Jesus' disciples at the feet of the Master and listen to him speaking, actually at some length. Basically, the whole section is the words of Jesus. And it happens on the night before he died. Now, John doesn't go into details about the Last Supper. That's rather surprising, isn't it? There's no account of the bread and wine that we get in the other Gospels. But John majors on Jesus, the servant, uh, washing his disciples' feet. He serves them and then dying for their salvation. He serves them. And he speaks to reassure and comfort them through these uh, chapters because he is going to be taken away through his death, his resurrection, his finally his ascension into heaven. He will be taken from them and it's going to feel pretty strange. But he does say in these chapters that it is for their good that he's going away and um, there's all sorts of spiritual blessings that he promises to them through these chapters. Uh, there are blessings but there's also a sense of darkness, the darkness of betrayal. Uh, there's a rec recognition of the, the world's opposition that his disciples will certainly meet. And there's a sense of foreboding as the cross approaches. But do watch out for what Jesus is going to gain for us, what he promises to us and what he prays for us. And enjoy the image too of the vine that comes in chapter 15. Nothing matters more than remaining, abiding in Jesus himself, the true vine. Take the opportunity to do that this week, to make sure that you are remaining in him, abiding in him as you read these chapters. We're going to be reading almost entirely, as I said, the words of Jesus through chapters 13 to 17. Uh, and you will hear what he says on that amazing night before his betrayal and death, his last night with his friends, before he takes upon himself the sin of the world. Such uh, an amazing opportunity, such momentous words. And let me pick out uh, one verse for your encouragement. Jesus said, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. That's John 14 verse 23. You show your love for Jesus by doing the things that he tells us to do and as we listen to his words we need to watch out for the things we must put into practice. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching and the verse goes on my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. What a promise that is isn't it? Chapter 14 verse 23. If you hear and obey the words of Jesus, then the Father and the Son together will love you and come to you and make their home in, in your home, with you, with you in your heart and life. They will set up their home with you. What a promise. And may that indeed be your experience, that they uh, dwell with you, 
by the Spirit as we read these great words of Jesus through this coming week. Have a good week, I hope you really do.